if I have yeah, if I have a ray and shine this way, and there is an angle between the ray and the normal, then the outgoing ray has a different angle. If there's an incident angle, there's a refractive angle, then we will have the refractive angle smaller than the incident angle. This phenomenon is called uh, refraction. That means the light cannot travel in a uh, straight, straight direction and when it's just a strike or interface. And now, if we have an object, for example, if I have an optical element, the element is made by glass, and this glass has a curvature, and we have the air on the both sides, and we have the glass in between. Okay. Uh, this object, or this element, is called a lens. So how does the lens work? And uh, we can just uh, find the center of the lens, then draw a horizontal line. We call this the main axis. Okay, this is the center of the lens. Then let's find the, um, the, the light. So if I put a light source here, here's a light source, and this light source will shine a ray in this way. And when this ray uh, strike the interface, the left interface, then it will uh, change the direction. So to find where the refractive ray look like, we can just uh, sketch the normal direction of this interface. So the normal interface will be this one. Normal face, uh, uh, the normal direction of this inter interface. Okay. Then um, the refractive angle is going to smaller than the incident angle. The incident angle is this one. If it's going to smaller, then that will be turning this way. A little bit smaller than the incident angle. So when this this ray strike. Uh, the other interface, we can still sketch as a normal direction of the second interface, then the outgoing ray will also turn. And we know uh, the outgoing ray will have a bigger angle than the angle in the glass. So we will have a ray turns down because this angle to the larger than this angle. So this two angle to the equivalent. So that means we have a ray going up after this ray penetrates the lens and the ray goes down. So that means if we have another ray shining in this way, it will turn down again. And if the ray goes in this way, then it will turn up. The same thing, they should, um, should be uh, symmetrical. So that means if I have a light source here, and this light source um, shine the rays in a divergent angle, in a side angle, then this divergent rays will be focused at a point. So this focus point is called the image of the light. So the light here is called object. And the light here, we have a light spot on the right side. This light spot is called image. And we call this lens as convergent lens. So the function of the convergent lens is to focus the divergent rays into a focal point. So that means if I have a, a group of parallel rays, 
and this parallel ray strike a lens. Strike a lens. This lens will focus the rays into a point. Okay, this point is called focal point. Okay, and the distance from the lens to the focal point is called the focal length. And we use a little f to represent. The focal length. Okay. Now this is a very special case. We have a parallel rays that will be focused at one point. If they are not parallel, they are diverge, like like this case, like this case. Um. So let's find the image generally. If I have a lens and I have a main axis. This main axis, a horizontal line that penetrates the center of the lens, it's called the main axis. And I have a focal point on the both sides, they are symmetrical. Focal point, I use capital F to represent, and the distance is called focal length. And also I have two times the focal point. So this is 2F, 2F. The distance is double. Then if I put the object on the left, the object can shine a line and the shine line, many rays. And all of these rays will be focused at a point. They will focus at one point. And if you put a screen on the right, then you move the screen and you will find a very sharp image of the screen. And the position of the screen is at here. If you put a screen here, you will find a very sharp image. And this image is flicked. And uh, if you just uh, move the screen forward and back, you'll find the image will turn blur. And only at this position, you will find the sharpest image. So the question is, how can we determine where the image is? Can we um, use the lab pass to determine the image? Um, we know all of the rays will be focused at one point. So that means if we have two special rays and these two special rays uh, intersect at a point, that point will be the position of the image. So we, we don't need to sketch so many rays. We only need two rays. The two rays will be very easy to sketch. So how can we find these two rays? So uh, I put a lens and I have a main axis focal point f to f to f okay so i put the object here we can find um some special ray first one is if the ray are parallel to the main axis this one the outgoing ray will uh will be through the focal point focal point here. So if the ray is parallel to the main axis, then it will turn and go through the focal point. The first one will be the ray that is parallel to the main axis will go through the focal point. Okay. 
this is uh, the first special rate. We have three special rates, and but actually we only need two. So here, the second one, the, the ray that penetrates through the center of the lens doesn't change direction. So this ray is through the center of the lens, center of lens, and the direction doesn't change. So remain the same. So the ray that is through the center of the lens doesn't change direction and traveling direction. Okay, that's the second way. The third one is the ray that uh, goes through the focal point will be parallel to the main axis. So that means, let me draw here. If there is a ray that is through the focal point, then the outgoing ray will parallel, will be parallel to the main axis. It's the third special ray. The third one is the ray that is through the focal point. will be parallel to the main axis. Okay, so we have special three special rays. The three special rays um, will give us um, the hint to draw the light path and determine where the image is. To determine the image, we only need the two special rays because the two rays will intersect at one point. And that point is where the position is, that the position of the image is. Okay, so we can draw this one. So the first special ray is the ray parallel to the main axis will change direction and through the focal point. Okay. The second one is if we have a ray that is through the center of the lens doesn't change the direction. Okay, that's the second special ray. The third one is the ray that through the focal point will be parallel to the axis, the red ray. Okay. So we will find the three rays intersect mm -hmm. here. So this is where the image is. Okay. Um, actually, if we want to determine where the position is, we can do the calculation. So we know the distance from the object to the lens is called object distance. Object distance. And the distance from the lens to the image is called image distance. And we use kept, uh, small p, little p to represent the object distance. And we use a little q to represent the image distance. And we want to find the relation between p, q, and focal length. What's the relation between the three parameters? To figure out that, let's draw the, the optical path carefully. So we have object here, and it shines on the ray and penetrates through the, the center point of the lens. So this will generate as here, the image here. Okay, so 
we find there are two similar triangles. One triangle is the red triangle. This one, this is one triangle. And the second triangle will be the blue triangle. These two triangles are similar. So the ratio of the side uh, should be equivalent. So we find that this length is T. Okay. This length is F. So what's the ratio of P over F? That will be this length over this length. So the long length, the long side over the short side. We can just set, um, use another color. You can see, set this side is B, this set, this side is A. Okay, so P over F could be equivalent to a plus B over A. This is just a geometry. And we can find that the ratio of these two sides are equivalent. Then we have another two triangles that are also similar. We have this two triangle. The first triangle is this one. And the second triangle is this one. So we have two triangles similar. And these two triangles have the ratio of A to B, right? This is equivalent to the one plus B to A, B over A. And let's see, into the second um, pair of the triangles, similar triangles, we have B over A equivalent to this side over this side, right? That will be one plus, this side is F, and this side will be the image distance minus the focal length. So we have F minus Q over F. Okay. Let's do some simplification. Simplification, then we will have one plus, this one will be Q minus F, Q minus F plus F. So we have Q over Q minus F. So eventually we have P over F equivalent to the Q over Q minus F. Then we can multiply Q over F, Q minus F on the left side, then this is gone. We Plus, we multiply the F on the right side, then this is gone. So eventually we will have Q times P minus F times P equivalent to Q times F. Then let's over, let's divide the QPF on both sides. So we divide QPF, QPF, QPF. So eventually we will have one over F, this is gone, minus this is gone, one over Q equivalent QF, QF, one over P. So this is called length equation. Uh, Dense equation. So that means if we know uh, the focal length, we know the image distance, we can solve the object distance. And usually if we want to determine where the image is, we use this equation. If we already set the object distance, then the image distance is determined. Okay. Then let's talk about some special uh, position. 
Um, from this um, this figure, let me draw a new image. That will be this is focal point. I have object here, one ray to the focal point, the other ray. Oh, hold on. The other ray penetrates to the center of the lens. Okay, so we want to know what's the magnification of the image. So the magnification could be the size ratio, right? The size ratio um, of image to the object. That's uh, defined as a magnification. So if the object has a, has a height of y, this is height of object, and the height of the image is y prime. So the magnification is defined as y prime over y. Y prime over y. And how to determine y, f, y over y prime? We have two triangles. One triangle is this one. There is a triangle. And the second triangle is this one. These two triangles are similar. So we have y prime over y. y is equal to the side will be equivalent to the image distance over the object distance. This q is p. So we have the magnification equivalent to the image distance over object distance. So that means if the image distance larger than the object distance, the magnification is the magnification is larger than one. If the image distance smaller than the object distance, the magnification is smaller than one. So let's discuss these two cases separately. The first one, if the object distance is very far, far away from the lens. So compare with the focal lens, it's larger than the two times of the focal lens. Then if I draw a figure precisely lens, this main axis, this is F, 2F, then I have object here. Then the optical rays, first ray coming in this way and goes down. The second one will be the ray penetrates through the center. Hmm. That's a very bad drawing. Let me use another one. So I use the ray penetrate through the focal lens, focal point. Then go in this way. Okay, so we will have an image like this. And the image is flipped. You can find that uh, if you put a screen on the right side, then on the screen, the, the image flipped. So I have a real image. Real means um, there is an image on the screen. So the real image and the flipped image. And if you check the distance of object P and distance of image Q, we can find that the P is larger than the Q. So in this case, we have the magnification smaller than one. So this is only the condition when the object distance larger than the two times the focal length. Then this is the principle of the camera. So if we use camera, usually the object is very far away from the lens. So the lens is here and your camera here. The distance from the camera to the image um, is fixed. And the object could be any flowers, or any peoples, but the distance is very far. Right? So most of the time, the 
object distance is larger than two times the focal length. So you will get a very small image of the detector of the camera. Okay, the second condition, if the object distance is smaller than 2f, but larger than 1f, then we can draw the figure. Optical path. For example, here. And we have one ray goes in this way. Right. We have the other ray. Hmm. I draw it very bad. I need a ruler. Then it's really coming this way. Okay, um, when we do the, the sketching, we need the ruler. So uh, if there's no ruler, the, the error will be very large. So in this case, we will find that the intersect point is very far away from the lens. And in this case, you will find the P will smaller than Q. So Q larger than P, so we have the magnification larger than one. So this is the principle of the projector. So most of the time, the projector has a lens and we have a, a lamp here, this is a lamp. Then we have the film here and the light shine the film and generate light rays and the lens will magnify the rays on the screen. So you will get a very large image. And in this case, we will find the image is also flipped. Flip, but they are real. Real image, and this is magnified image. This is a big image. Okay, what if the object distance smaller than the F, the focal length? What will happen? So if we have a lens, we have a focal point this way, then we put the object very close to the lens. Then one ray goes through the focal point, the other ray through the center of the lens. Then you will find on the right side, these two rays never intersect. This angle is larger, become larger and larger. So that means they don't intersect. If you put a screen on the right side, there's no image on the screen no image if there's no image can we use this uh, to get uh, anything useful but if there's no image on the screen but if you look in this way looking this way the human's eyes has another lens your eyes has another lens. I show you the structure of the human's eye here. You can find the retina and the lens at the different position. This is a lens of a human's eye. This is the color. This is a lens of a human's eye. And you can also find this is a retina. The retina actually is a screen. So if the light rays coming in this way, if the light rays come in this way and they are diverging, they don't intersect, but the divergent rays could be focused by the human lens to the retina. So the retina has many sensors, sensor cells. This is a sensor cell can detect the image. So that means if there's no image on the screen, but you can still see something through your eyes. So here we have a new lens. This lens 
with humans eye, right? And the eyes will focus the divergent rays. These rays are divergent. And on the retina, this is retina. So it seems like that on the reversal expansion rays, they intersect here. All the divergent rays need a source. The source is you go reverse and expand the, the rays and go to the, the source. It's the same like that. There is something, there is an object, and shine the rays divergent and focused by the human's eyes. So what you see from your eyes is an image of this object. But if you put a screen here, if you put a screen here, there's no image. This image is in your, in your eyes, not the real image. So we call this a virtual image. Okay, so um, you find that this image is, is larger than the object, object here, and this is a virtual image, and you will get a magnified image, and this image is a normal, it's not flipped image. Non-flipped, flipped, and magnified, and this is a virtual image. So this is the um, application when you use a lens to magnify the text. So if you read textbook and for the old people, the eyesight is poor, then you use a magnified lens, magnify the, the text. Um, so if the, the lens is close to the textbook, then they will magnify the text and magnify the words a little bit larger then they can see the text very clearly. So if you um, push the lens and pull the, the lens very far from the textbook, then you will see a flip the text. So you have to make sure um, the object distance is less than the focal length. Then if we check the image or the, the lens equation, one over P plus one over Q equal to one over F. We have uh, the relation that P larger than, uh, smaller than F when we want to use a magnified lens, then you will find one over P will smaller than, hold up, the P smaller than F, the one over P will larger than one over F. Okay, so that means this term is larger than this term. Then if you solve this equation, you will get a negative value, right? One over P larger than one over F, when you plus something, you get a smaller number, then that means that number is negative number. So if you get a negative number, that means the image is not on the right. So on the right side, the image distance is larger than zero, it's positive. If you get a negative, the uh, negative value, that means the image is on, on the left. So the Q will be here, that's uh, smaller than zero, a minus number. Okay, so if we do the magnification, we use Y prime over Y, then we will get a Q over P, then you will get a negative number. So how can a magnification become a negative? So um, to verify this relation, we use absolute value. So the absolute value will be the absolute Q of absolute P, then we'll get a positive number.
And in this case, this image is not flipped. So if you get a positive, positive P and positive Q, that means the image is real and it's flipped. If you have a positive P but negative Q, then you get a virtual image. And it's non-flipped. That's a normal image. Okay, so this is uh, um, something I want to uh, highlight. Do you have any question? I'm just a bit confused about like your absolute value bars and the magnif magnification question, just because like Professor Biagio put a negative sign in front of that same thing, of, in front of the Q over P for magnification. So I'm just- You mean we need a um, negative sign here? Uh, he put it in front of the Q, like to handle that sign with the Q. Like this? I, I just don't know how to reconcile like, those two things. I'm just a little confused. Um, so when we talk about the magnification, they should be a positive number. So if we have a negative value for either Q or P, then we put a negative sign in front of this value. But eventually we need a positive value. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so if you don't have questions, let's do the quiz. I think this is the last quiz. And next week, the Thanksgiving week, we don't have class. And the week after Thanksgiving, uh, we don't have quiz. So that's the last week. And the last week, I will uh, review a previous exam. I haven't decided which exam I'm going to review, uh, but I will tell you um, before you come back. And so uh, if you have any question about the ele electromagnetics, optics, and also the wave propagation, you can send me email. And uh, uh, I think you can find the quiz on the course site. The, the quiz is about um, how to use the lab pass to interpret the, the lens, the image of the lens. And I think you can take 10 minutes to finish after you've done, uh, please upload your solution on the course site. And if you, you finish, you can go. And I wish you have a safe and uh, joyful Thanksgiving.